John Rasmus here. I want you all to know that 100% of any pledges on my Patreon are going to go towards the betterment of my channel. Redo as many things as I possibly can. Put more effort, which does require money. Occasionally I'll hear about a super rare book and I happen to see it on Amazon really dirt cheap. I get it for an episode. And I do have 50 episodes right behind me. But I want to go to visit the Manly P. Hall Library. And I can't afford to drive there. Man, I just found out about it. I, I've only known about Manly P. Hall for a couple years. Because I've only been reading occult books since late 2012. Before then, I didn't even think about the subject enough to be interested in it. I had a supernatural experience happen to me in 2010, six months later, 2011. In 2010, the incident was very short. It was a few minutes long. That's it. But six months later, I had six months, strangely six months and later, six months total of poltergeist activity. And it's a true story. It's 100% true. I'm writing a book about it. And so the efforts that go into my Patreon will definitely help the process of me writing my first book called Corners of Rooms. I would say Corners of Rooms, I'm probably one-fifth, maybe one-fourth the way through, and I'm going to illustrate medieval-style nine woodcuts or eight woodcuts, and I'm going to find some copyright-free medieval woodcuts that relate to what I'm talking about and I'm gonna write the best I can to illustrate details on what happened to me for six months for six months straight something happened in the corner of my room it's a true story but because I'm known as the hoax hunter who busted people that made up fake stories it's I fully understand and I see the perspective of atheists of believers different religious perspectives. I don't like the politics of religion. I don't like the politics of politics. But what I saw firsthand made such an impression on me. I dropped my hoax hunter stuff, dropped it 100%, and focused everything on researching what happened to me. But I didn't immediately research other than Google. During the event, I typed in the word poltergeist and any combination of the word, most of the results ended up with Hollywood titles. But fast forward to today, I'm still researching. You will see I have many occult-themed shows, Occult Unmasked, the Occult Esoteric Antiquarian Book Review, and there are resources that require to make a video. We have Hoax Hunter, my first original show which I will bring back upon request. My research continues to reverse engineer and read between the lines of these occult books because... When you want to find answers about fifth dimensional entities, invisible entities, there aren't too many places you can go. But a lot of these occultists, they describe it. They describe it firsthand. A lot of them have biases. Everyone has biases. So I really have to thoroughly research, see where they're coming from, and I see tiny key details. And when I see those details, I'm like, wow, only someone who experienced that would even go to that rationale. For example, L.W. DeLawrence, the magician from Chicago, he has almost a full chapter rationalizing how is it possible this happened, how is it possible these entities exist, and reading a full chapter, multiple pages of him rationalizing in the universe the, the place of these entities, I knew based on his words alone, that he firsthand had contact, saw, witnessed, sensed, was bothered, or perhaps he summoned it, an entity from another dimension. They do exist. 
I know for 100% personal fact they do. As much as I would like to prove it, it's very, very difficult to prove it to people. My efforts are primarily anti-occult, as I don't practice any magic. I've never summoned an entity. I was minding my own business in 2010, waiting for a text, of all things, and an entity appeared to me. I've never detailed that story, but I'm going to detail it in my book, either Corners of Rooms or the second book, which thoroughly details A to Z, and I'm going to cut out the boring stuff. No one wants to hear a biography. And it's not its not extremely over the top. It's not the movie Poltergeist with flying stuff all over the place. Chairs stacking all over the place. You know, As the hoax hunter, I've busted a few hoaxes here and there. A few famous ones. Or helped out in the process, most definitely. But it goes in the realm of people lying and scheming. And I'm just not a fan of lying and scheming. I'm a fan of the truth. I'm a fan of exposing lies, seeking the truth. These negative forces in the universe, they don't like light necessarily. I heard a quote, I really liked it, and I'm going to butcher it, but these entities hate light, whether it's physical light or the repeating of truth or the broadcasting of truth. That is, in and of itself, a type of light. And they hate it. They like darkness. They like secrets. They like occult. The definition of occult, hidden. They like to, they like to keep their secrets hidden. And anyone who wants to expose these secrets, I follow and take great interest in. Because I am of that same spirit. I'm of that same drive to expose the secrets. So I want to go to that Manly P. Hall, I believe it's called the Philosophical Research Society in Los Angeles. I want to go there. I want to film it. I want to just look at some of the books. And I do have a very rare Manly P. Hall book called The Initiates of the Flame. And I did one video on it, but the video I did on it was my second reading. And my second reading wasn't as good as the first time I read it. A lot of secrets popped out to me. And I wrote... I didn't write any notes. Dang it. So I need to read this a third time. Try to find the secrets. For example, there are 72 pages in this book. 72 is a very sacred number in the occult, in Kabbalah, mysticism. 72 is repeated so many times. It's off the charts. Manly P. Hall knew that. He ended the book on page 72. There are more than that. There are actual secrets. This is Manly P. Hall's first book. He wrote many books. He collected occult dark magic books. And the reason Manly P. Hall collected those books was not to practice them. He didn't practice black magic. According to the people who run his foundation to this day, he didn't practice black magic. He collected these dark books to keep them away from the people who sought them. He had ancient manuscripts, really rare ones, with black magic spells. And to be honest, the best way you can know what to avoid is to know what something is. And I've been ignorant a good portion of my life on even what the definition of a familiar spirit is. Do you know what a familiar spirit is? I have a solid understanding of what that is, and I believe a familiar spirit poltergeist demon, for lack of a better term, manipulated objects in my room for six months straight. It was closer to five and a half months, and I moved out of there, and that's probably the only reason why it was six months, because I stayed there for six months, and I took off, and I left. The entity may or may not have followed me, but residually... I'll sense or hear or something tiny. It's never huge. That six months was torture. It was, I would say it was hell. I haven't revealed many tiny details and many big details from those six months. But I'm going to write about it and I'm going to continue to research. I'm an authentic first-hand witness to what I consider to be a fifth dimensional entity. It was invisible, 100% optically invisible. It moved around objects, but it had a 
limit on how much strength or how much power it had to move things. For example, it could probably pretty easily move or a bottle of water or a stack of boxes if it's teetering a little bit. I'll go into extreme detail in my book, but in my videos as well. I use my first-hand witness to back up whether these occultists and occult researchers who wrote these other books are telling the truth. And to be honest, a lot of them are ignorant. And a lot of them may have sensed entities through a meditative state. And that is one way to do it. But I was not in a meditative state during any of the times except before and after sleep paralysis. Very common. But I believe there is a false sleep paralysis which is mimicked. I'm off the subject. It goes beyond what I wanted to mention, but this Patreon 100% supports my channel, youtube.com slash hoaxhunter. So visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Rasmus, and please pledge one dollar. It will greatly support my efforts. I started my Hoax Hunter channel in 2009. The event happened to me in 2010 and 11. I was... I wanted to touch upon the Montauk Project, and so I did a Philadelphia experiment before, so I could talk about those, and I, I was like, you know what, I gotta mention what happened to me in 2010, 2011. I can't keep it a secret forever, it's the most important thing that happened to me in my life. I'm sure there are many people that go out there and tell stories, and they're totally full of hogwash. My story, I guarantee you, is as authentic as a story can get. I have been able to convince a few people firsthand, but as far as through the internet, a handful of people believe me here and there, and many reject it, and they think I'm lying. But, I assure you, I wouldn't have purchased all of these books, and many more, if the experience didn't happen to me. I didn't purchase a single occult book, or even read an occult book, before the events of 2011. I did buy a couple of Montauk Project books, Time Travel. I'm a big fan of the subject of time travel. And there are a few occult references in those books, but I wouldn't consider them purely occult books. These behind me are primarily occult books. But I do plan on doing more reviews. Time Travel, I'm a huge fan. There's a book on Back to the Future, which I would like to talk about. There are many, many subjects I'd like to talk about. Please support my Patreon, patreon.com slash Rasmus. Thank you for all of the support. This has been John Rasmus. I'll be seeing you in the future. Be seeing you.